In this video, I'm going to show you how you can create your own multiple choice single answer question. Okay, let's get started here. So I'm designing a particular uh, question slide here. And as you can see, I'm designing with mobile in, in mind. Of course, it will also play nicely on tablet, portrait, or desktop as well. But I'm just sort of going with that mobile in mind, just so I can get a, a design that works really well with smartphones and, and other smaller tablets, let's say. Um, so one of the things I've noticed in the, in the forums lately uh, for Adobe Captivate is people um, dealing with the interactions. And you see these, these different learning interactions here. And one of the popular learning interactions has to do with um, having radio buttons or um, uh, as well, you've also got the uh, radio buttons as well as the check boxes buttons. And uh, some of the results people have been having are that they don't really work well with responsive design. Um, you know, especially if you're, uh, even though, you know, you don't really change your responsive design settings as you're using a device. But imagine a tablet, which is currently in portrait, suddenly being switched to um, landscape mode. And the results aren't always quite favorable when that happens. I think the best solution, and you know, the, they're great to have these, these, these built-in interactions that Adobe provides you are fantastic, especially if you're just getting started with e-learning. However, I think once you've had uh, some time, a few months to experience what Adobe Captivate can do for you, I recommend that you start developing your own solutions. And this is going to be one of those types of solutions here. So this is responsive design. So there's certain things that I need to keep in mind. Uh, I need to make choices that are appropriate for uh, this particular type of interaction here. Um, what I've done, because I've got mobile design in mind, um, I've designed the size of the objects to be appropriate for this breakpoint. One of the challenges that comes up frequently is if you need a perfect circle, like a radio button would be. In this case, I've chosen to set it at a very specific pixel point, and then using the right click or the context uh, menu to apply those position properties to all views. What I'm basically saying is that this circle is 31 pixels by 31 pixels, and it's going to remain 31 pixels by 31 pixels, regardless of what aspect ratio you're choosing and regardless of which breakpoint you've selected or any of the number of points between breakpoints. Uh, and the reason I choose pixels is because if you choose percentage, for example, percentage of the width and the height of the screen, on different aspect ratios, these are gonna look very skewed. So stick with something like pixels. It's a fixed way to control the size of objects on your screen. I have uh, other videos that deal with responsive design. This is not about that today, so we'll, we'll just go beyond that and talk about how I've created this particular interaction. So what I have is um, a couple of things that I had to do to set this up. Now, I'm a big fan of creating my own navigation controls, and this course will cert uh, certainly undoubtedly have those types of things. So I've gone into the Properties drop-down menu and gone into the Skin Editor. Alternatively, you can press Shift F8. And I've turned off the Show Playback Control because I want my controls to be the things that users click on. I don't want them to click on the built-in functionality. And that's fine. Uh, the other thing I've done is I've had to set up uh, four different variables to each represent one of the four radio buttons on the screen. That's also done from your pro project drop-down menu. You can select variables there. Incidentally, you can also access the variables window through the advanced actions window. And I'll show you that when we get there. Um, but this is basically it. I have a variable called Q1A1, Q1A2, Q1A3, Q1A4. Q1 is simply question one because presumably I'll have more than one question in this particular project. And 
A1 is answer 1, answer 2, answer 3, and so on. I start all of these variables with VAR underscore for several reasons. It's useful to remember or to set uh, variable names to be something that's easily recognizable as a variable. But also, if they all start with VAR, they're all going to be grouped together on any lists where you're going to be selecting your variables. The other thing that's important on, that, on a similar note is that any of the objects that you create for your project should be named appropriately. So here's the first uh, radio button, and I've called it Q1A1. Same thing for the remaining radio buttons. They're all Q1A4, Q1A2, Q1A3. I also have made sure to label my submit button because later on I'm going to need to make a, a, a reference to it in an advanced action. And of course, I don't want uh, I don't want there to be uh, any uncertainty as to which object I'm referring to. So let's get into the advanced actions that allow this multiple choice single answer question to function. There are four advanced actions for the selection of radio buttons. And then there's a fifth advanced action for the submit button, which will check which of the radio buttons you've selected. So let's take a look at the advanced action behind the Ottawa choice, which incidentally is the correct answer for this particular question. So if we go to our properties panel and then go to the actions tab, you'll see I've already got execute advanced actions and I've got select underscore Q1A1 as the script associated with that. And similarly, there's select Q1A2, select Q1A3, and Q1A4. The good news is, is while this looks like a lot of code that needs to be written for this one single question, I'm actually able to duplicate most of what I've done from Q1A1 to create number two, three, and four. Let's take a look at answer one, first of all. So I'm going to click on the advanced actions icon next to there, and that will bring up our advanced actions window. So again, I've chosen a name that's appropriate. This is selecting the right answer, or actually selecting any answer would be uh, the same. And uh, what I'm saying is that this is a conditional action. If the variable that I created earlier for the first answer, which is the correct answer, is presently equal to zero, and that's the default value. We're going to do these eight things. Now, that looks like a lot, but really we're just doing the same thing four different times, really. The first case, we're assigning the variable Q1A1 with one. Remember, it's already zero, so we're going to change that to a value of one. We're telling the system that Q1A1 has been selected, and to make sure that anything else that was previously selected is returned back to a value of zero, we're doing just that. We're assigning answer two with a value of zero, answer three with a value of zero, and so on. Similarly, on the other uh, advanced actions, uh, we would be just simply changing the assignment. Um, so for, for example, if I switch this to question one, answer two, the only difference in these first four lines of code is that I would be assigning question one, answer one, a value of zero, but instead answer two gets that value of one. Let's go back to answer one, first of all. The next set of functions is I'm going to change the state of those radio buttons. Those radio buttons are uh, multi-state objects that contain two views one of which is a normal view where the inside of the radio button is hollow. And then there's a selected view as well, or a selected state, which shows the inside of that circle being filled in as if it were selected. So again, we're just changing the state of answer one to selected, but also making sure to change the state of any previously selected radio buttons back to normal or empty, if you will. And that's it. There's no else action associated with this particular uh, advanced action. And as I said, we've duplicated it with some small changes for answer two, three, and four. Now, the submit button 
is going to run an advanced action. And the result of that advanced action is to display one of two possible feedback boxes and to provide the user a continue button to proceed with the rest of the project. So the correct answer looks like this. That's correct, and then there's a continue button, or you could call it next or whatever you wish. Uh, and this is a grouped object. Now, I've kept it hidden on the timeline, but more importantly, it's actually hidden on the properties view for output as well. So when you initially run the slide, even though this is part of the objects on that slide, uh, these two grouped items will be not visible in output until the user clicks submit with the correct answer. Uh, or in the case of the incorrect answer, the same, same idea. Just change the color different and change the text, of course. The action associated with the continue button that's part of this grouped object is simply to go to the next slide. And in the case of the correct answer, you can add one little bit of uh, functionality to that continue button to have it include as part of your quiz if you want. So if you check off include in quiz and assign points to it, this becomes part of your final quiz. If I uncheck this, it's simply a knowledge check that won't contribute to the quiz at all and you might have a different message. So that's pretty much it. Let's take a look at the advanced action for that submit button. Again, remember that everything is labeled properly, including the submit button. It's called submit up here. This is where you label your objects. It's important to change objects from the default. It certainly is a best practice because uh, the default object for something like this might be smart shape underscore 28753 or something like that. And later on, if you need to reference that particular object in an advanced action, as we will in this case, uh, changing it to submit button or something like that is far more meaningful. In this case here, the, um, the submit button is really a shape. And I've gone to the properties panel and I'm check I've checked off use as button. And we're executing advanced action submit question one, because presumably there will be submit question two and so on. So let's take a look at that advanced action. Also conditional action. So uh, what we're saying is if the variable Q1A1, which is the variable associated with the correct answer, is equal to one, in other words, the user has selected the correct answer, we're going to show the correct question feedback. But for safety's sake as well, we're also going to disable all of those radio buttons so that the user can't change their answer once they've hit submit. And we're also going to disable the submit button as well. Just a bit of precautions here to prevent users from mucking up your, your project. Now, this is an if action um, advanced action. So if this particular uh, condition is true, all this stuff's going to run. But what if they choose a wrong answer? Well, that's where the else statement becomes valuable. Within the else section, we have show the incorrect message, but we're also going to continue to disable those functions as well. So in this case here, we're going to give users only one chance to get this correct. You could have them uh, clear off the incorrect message and not disable the opportunity to hit it a second time or third time or whatever, uh, if you wanted to give them multiple chances. In this case, it's a one-shot deal. So we're going to close the advanced action here. and We'll try this out, make sure it works as expected. We'll do it once incorrectly, and then we'll do it once correctly. So here's our multiple choice single answer. Again, the correct answer is Ottawa, but we're going to choose Vancouver, and we'll hit Submit. That's incorrect. If I hit, can, if I try to hit submit or change my answer, you can see that none of that is available to me. I can only hit this continue button, which will bring me to my quiz results slide where you can see clearly I failed. I did not get uh, 100% or, uh, or what have you. 
Um, so let's try it now this time correctly. We'll preview the project. So here we have, uh, again, our radio buttons work fine. We've selected Ottawa. We're going to hit submit. That's correct. And of course, now I can hit continue. And in this case here, again, we've assigned this to be, this continue button is now part of the quiz. Not to be confused with the, the continue button that's uh, in the incorrect message. This is a different continue button that's part of the correct feedback group. And now, of course, congratulations, you passed the quiz. And I've got a score of one, one out of one questions right. So I, I'm doing okay. Guys, if you like the videos that I produce for you, I encourage you to subscribe to my channel. And if you thought this video was helpful or useful, go ahead and give me a thumbs up.